Since then, Chavez has moved up to the 140-pound super lightweight class as a prelude to greater matchups and more money. Experts say the added weight offers problems Chavez hasn't faced before. I thought at 135 he was one of the best fighters in the world, if not the best. At 140, I still think he's a great technician because you don't lose that, but I don't think he's as devastating a puncher as he was, and I'm not even sure if he takes as good a punch. Chavez insists 140 pounds is just right for him. Yesterday, we did a test of endurance, and I worked 12 rounds. I felt stronger than ever, and I was really happy to be natural in weight, not weak from losing to make less than 140 pounds. The proof is in the ring. At 135 pounds, Chavez was dominant. He batted Edwin Rosario around for 11 brutal rounds two years ago and later knocked out Rodolfo Aguilar in his first title defense at that weight. Aguilar looking for a place to fall after the right hand. A great fighter does what he has to do, so looks great. Later, Chavez added the WBC crown with his defeat of Jose Luis Ramirez. Oh, right hand oh, he Ramirez. Ramirez is staggered but doesn't go down. Chavez steps in. But then Chavez moved up to the 140-pound weight division. The muscle he added looked fine on his skinny frame, and Chavez sounded no fears about climbing into the ring with larger opponents. At this weight, I feel stronger and quicker. I should have been at this weight two years ago. We've seized this opportunity, and I think now you will see the real me come out. So which is the real Chavez? Years ago, in his super featherweight fight against Roger Mayweather, Chavez bullied his way to a second round knockout. But in the rematch 10 pounds later, Chavez seemed a half step slower. Mayweather was able to get to Chavez much more than in the first fight. Chavez is one of those kind of fighters like the last great Mexican fighter, Salvador Sanchez, who fights to the level of his opposition. He went into the second Mayweather fight feeling, well, I knocked this guy out in two. Uh, there's nothing to worry about. I've taken his best shots already. They didn't do anything. Uh, I'll chase him out of the ring. I think the difference in that fight was Mayweather more than Chavez. Fighting at varying levels has brought out the best and the worst in Chavez. Starting slowly in most fights, he spots adversaries a couple of rounds before rallying. Both fighters beginning to step up the action now, and certainly Ramirez is finding Chavez much more than was the case in round one. He landed a very good left and a very good right, Kevin. And he opened up. He thought he heard him. He opened up. This strategy may be exciting, but it's hardly recommended against 140-pound fighters like tonight's opponent, Sammy Fuentes. Well, I think the, uh, the weight's irrelevant. I, I think uh, uh, it's the opponent that matters. The opponent will either be able to move enough to keep him off balance and counterpunch to hurt him enough, or Chavez's will and his intensity will put him in within range so that he can hammer away at the body with those great left, hook, left hooks of his. Julio Cesar Chavez's short-term goal is a 140-pound unification fight with Meldrick Taylor. If and when that happens, Chavez knows he can't spot Taylor any rounds, or he could find himself needing an unlikely knockout to win. Tonight's fight should be a good indicator as to whether the 140-pound Chavez is as much a champion as the lighter one we've seen so many times before. And now we bring you back live to ringside at the Indoor Pavilion in Caesars Palace, World Championship Boxing on HBO Sports, the network of champions. Tonight, the 12-round WBC Super Lightweight Championship bout between champion Julio Cesar Chavez and the challenger, fifth rated in the world by the WBC, Sammy Fuentes of Puerto Rico. As I mentioned, the most interested spectator in America, Meldrick Taylor, who has a multi-million dollar date with Julio Cesar Chavez scheduled for March 17 of next year. Meldrick is in Philadelphia tonight. He joins us live via satellite now to talk to our Larry Merchant. Larry? Meldrick, good evening. Welcome to our show. Is this an anxious moment for you because your opponent in March has to get through this tonight for you to make an awful lot of money? It's, it's so, Larry. My adrenaline is flowing right now to oh, baby, sit here and watch Chavez fight, take this fight, knowing that I'll be preparing for Chavez next year, March 17th. From, from the point of view of a professional fighter like yourself, forget for a moment that you're going to be his opponent. What is impressive about Chavez? 
Chavez is a very aggressive and a very persistent fighter. He has a lot of experience, and I, I respect him as a champion. I think he's one of the best um, champions of all times. Have you ever fought anybody quite like him? And what do you expect to have to deal with, and how do you expect to deal with it from this long-term perspective? I never faced an opponent like Chavez. Chavez, like I said, is a very sup superior boxer. He's a very patient fighter. But my skills put against his skills, I think, will be um, a very interesting fight. Now, you have a fight coming up Monday night in Atlantic City against somebody named Rocky Balboa. He's not a heavyweight, is he? <laughs> no, he's not, Larry. <laughs> All right. You had an injury uh, last year. You were out of commission for some seven months. Conditioning is going to be very, very important against a fighter as persistent with his stamina as Chavez has. Have you been able to get back to where you were before your injury to your leg? Well, Larry, um, I fought um, September and I felt great. The, um, the velado movement, you know, mobility was there. I don't think that I'm 100%, but I think I'm getting towards that um, point of being 100%. I feel great. I feel as though I'm getting stronger as, as I go along. But I, by me having that long layoff, it had affected me a little bit, um, not getting the kind of work that I should have got. But um, now things are starting to get back into the perspective that I wanted to be in. Uh, let me make a correction. You are fighting in Philadelphia Monday night, right? Yes, I am, Larry. Your hometown. Uh, good luck. And I assume that uh, Mr. Chavez will be just as anxious as uh, on Monday night as you are tonight to see the both of you get through this and we'll talk to you later in the show for your impressions of the fight tonight. Good luck. What Meldrick Taylor is going to be in for in March, Sammy Fuentes will be in for tonight. Uh, we all saw very clearly back in May when Roger Mayweather fought Chavez. Roger Mayweather is a good professional fighter. He got himself into the absolute best condition he could be in. He was highly motivated. He fought his heart out. And after 10 rounds, he gave in, quit in his corner. Chavez's modus operandi is to come out, take your best shots, see what you have, and then give you his best shots. Because he takes a shot so well, the end has always been ordained. Let's see what happens tonight. All right, thank you very much, Larry Merchant. And there is your first look at Sammy Mangani Fuentes of Luisa, Puerto Rico, 25 years old, fighting for the 29th time, getting his first shot at a world championship. Some would be cynical enough to say this is nothing more than a club fighter, a journeyman. Indeed, his record of 21 wins, six losses, and one draw is not spectacular or eye-catching, but perhaps a bit misleading. He has fought more quality fighters than most fighters will in their first 28 bouts. His last two bouts, two tough 12-round fights with Rodolfo Aguilar of Panama, a man who 16 months ago gave Julio Cesar Chavez a good deal of difficulty before succumbing to a sixth-round knockout here in Las Vegas. Aguilar, a lanky fighter who was fighting southpaw when he gave Chavez trouble, got a draw in his first bout with Fuentes. Then in their second 12-round matchup, Fuentes won an easy and lopsided decision. He makes his way to the ring now, obviously with his spirits higher than ever in his career for this first title shot. And Larry Merchant, as you mentioned, a dangerous, tough fighter, particularly on the inside. Yeah, throws a lot of uppercuts. Uh, an experienced fighter. He made, he fought a fight, that second fight with Aguilar. It was the nearest thing you'll ever see to a winner takes all. $75,000 to the winner, $10,000 to the loser. He won the fight. He's taken this fight tonight for just $30,000. Peanuts. Well, it'll buy a lot of peanuts, but the, the champion will get about a half a million dollars. And there you see his record. He's fought a lot of good fighters. He's lost to some, most of them. And in the six losses, Fuentes has been knocked out four times. Knocked out by fighters like Freddie Pendleton and Frankie Randall and Roger Mayweather. 
and Juan Nazario. All of them good fighters, none of them great fighters. Meanwhile, Julio Cesar Chavez is seen by most as a great fighter. And here's one of the reasons why. His 64 wins without a draw, without a loss, at the beginning of his career, the fourth longest such streak in the history of the sport, and the longest since before World War I. Since I never heard of the first three guys, I don't know what it means. <laughs> but having seen Chavez, I know it means a lot. He doesn't want to lose. You would think that along a career of 64 professional fights, a lot of them in tank towns in Mexico, a man might be given the, the credit for having slipped once in a while, but he's always there. He's one of the few champions I've ever seen who I'd have to say simply loves to fight. He's like, he's like a carpenter who loves to drive every nail. Indeed. <laughs> Since his title shot victory over Mayweather in May, he has fought three times. Non-title fights, two of them in Mexico. He says partially because most of his fans in Mexico don't have the money to come to the United States to watch him fight. And that's why he's such a good champion. He's never far out of shape so that when he goes into training for a fight, he doesn't have to worry too much about weight. He worries about the opponent. He prepares for the fight, not for the weight. He's sharp. He doesn't spend himself in the gym. Now, he himself claims 66 wins without a loss, and many people give him credit for that. Two of those victories during the first year of his career cannot be verified by HBO's statistical count. So consequently, we say that he's 64 and though. Either way, it's not bad. Tail of the tape, and you'll see there's very little difference between the two fighters. The one significant thing here, Larry, Chavez struggled perhaps a little bit to make it under 140, and this is a man who's regarded by some as being at a weight well above his best natural weight. Well, he says he's now a natural 140 pounder and that it was uh, some rough work to, to make this weight. Uh, but I think it's a comfortable weight for him at this age. And here are our punch stat numbers to give us a profile of how active these fighters are, both against Aguilar. Aguilar gave Chavez a little bit of uh, trouble when they fought. Chavez threw 55 punches, landed something over 50%. In the second fight with Aguilar, Fuentes threw about as many punches and landed only a third of the punches, although uh, we watched that tape today, and in the rounds we saw it seemed that Fuentes landed a lot more, perhaps because so many of them, Jim, were hard punches. Particularly in the later rounds when Fuentes was really coming on. Rules for the bout here in Nevada and those for the WBC. Well, first, jabs per round, Larry. Uh, as you see, Chavez throws more jabs. Fuentes... Uh, is a round puncher. He throws a lot of hooks, occasionally jabs to the body. Chavez does more classic work. And now the rules for the fight, and you will see three judges score the fight. The referee does not score. Ten-point must here. No standing eight count. No three knockdown rule, and you can be saved by the bell in the last round only. Right now, up to the ring announcer, Chuck Hull, for pre-fight introductions. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Sports Pavilion of Caesars Palace where tonight Don King Productions, in association with Caesars Palace, presents World Championship Boxing. This fight is sanctioned by the World Boxing Council, Jose Suleiman, President. The supervisor is Dr. James Nave. And the Nevada State Athletic Commission also is supervising Dr. James Nave, the chairman. The commissioners at ringside are Dr. Elias Gunham, Jay Nady, Dwayne Ford, and Luther Mack. The executive director is Chuck Minker. And now, ladies and gentlemen, before we get into the main event of the evening, I have a sad duty to prepare because we have been deprived of the lives of four of the members of the boxing fraternity in the past few weeks. Three of those gentlemen, Stephen Hyde, Mark Edis, and John Beninov, were killed in a tragic chopper crash in the East Coast just a few weeks ago. The fourth man who passed on because of cancer was John Condon, who has been associated with boxing for many years as an announcer, a broadcaster, and a matchmaker for Madison Square Garden. So if you would please all rise as we pay homage to these men who have blessed us and our timekeeper, Jane Broadfoot, 
will sound the ten count in their memory. May God rest their souls. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the officials assigned by the governing bodies for the next bout of the evening, the judges will be Bill Graham, Dave Moretti, and Dolby Shirley. The timekeeper is Jane Broadfoot. Counting in the knockdowns, Do uh, Mike uh, Morabito. The attending physicians at ringside are Drs. Cliff Amansky, Albert Campana, and William Berliner. And your referee for the next bout of the evening is Carlos Padilla. This is the main event of the night. 12 rounds of boxing for the WBC Lightweight Championship of the World. Introducing, in the blue corner, fighting out of Luisa Puerto Rico. Weighing in at 139 and three-quarter pounds, with a professional record of 21 wins, six defeats, one draw, with 17 KOs, he is rated number five in the world by the WBC and is the challenger, Sammy Fuente. And in the red corner, from Culiacan in Mexico, he too weighs 139 and three-quarter pounds. His professional record consists of 64 wins, no defeats with 54 KOs. He has held four world titles, three of them in different weight divisions. He is the current WBC Super Lightweight Champion of the World, Julio Cesar Chaudet. Okay, Fuentes, Cabez, you were already given instructions in your respective dressing room. Are there any questions? Chip seconds, chip seconds. Okay, seconds come up for you. Julio Cesar Chavez will fight in black trunks for the first time in his career. He has been, in recent years, a notoriously slow starter, often using the first round merely to feel out his opponent. However, he told us yesterday that would not be the case tonight, that he would be aggressive early and try to go for a knockout in the first five rounds. We'll see. A good combination right out of the corner. The Fuentes, a right to the body, a left to the jaw. Oh, put it up, put it up. Fuentes is an uncommon Puerto Rican fighter. All of the Puerto Rican fighters I've ever seen were boxers. Some of them were good punchers, but they were all boxers. Julio Cesar Chavez says that all Mexican fighters dislike Puerto Rican fighters because they talk too much. He says he fears Fuentes because Fuentes doesn't talk at all. Having interviewed him yesterday, I can vouchsafe that. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't talk at all. <laughs> Fuentes off to an aggressive start. And already he's throwing the uppercut with the left hand, his favorite punch, the one that was most effective in the two fights against Aguilar. Good right hand there, Jim. Certainly he's not showing any respect for Chavez. You're looking at two fighters who favor the left hand. Now Chavez scores with an inside uppercut with the right. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Chavez and Carlos Padilla motioned with his hand for him to get it up. Chavez patiently going to the body. And through the last 30 seconds, he's begun to heat up and become a little bit more the aggressive.
Both fighters have a history of being effective against the ropes. with the left hook and the left uppercut and now he's backing Quintes up a bit. As we go to the corners between rounds, our interpreter is former world champion Ruben Castillo. You gotta use your left hand more. Do it more frequently. Throw so your right hand and a left hook over the top. Combinations. Combinations, champ. You gotta throw, you throw punches two times. Throw them double, they, they'll, uh, they'll land. You don't need those. Don't blow your nose too much. Not necessary. You gotta, you gotta bob and weave more. Don't stand straight up and down. In his last three fights on HBO against Mayweather, Ramirez, and Rosario, Chavez had thrown an average of around 33 punches in the first round. Tonight he threw 41 punches in the first round, so a little bit more aggressive, though perhaps not as much so as he claimed would be the case yesterday. Twenties by punch count statistics threw 77 punches in the first round, but only landed 17. Fuente throws a lot of punches on an upward plane, even jabs. Everything is from down to up. Uppercuts, hooks. Chavez seems content to let Fuentes be the aggressor and to try to counter accurately. A right hand lead to the head landed for Chavez. Fuentes likes to fight off the ropes, but I don't know if he wants to do that against Chavez. And whenever you see Chavez back a man up against the ropes, watch for left hooks to the body. It's his favorite punch in close. Good uppercut. He doubled on the left, a jab and followed by a hook. Beautiful. stuff in there, Jim. Good right hand by Chavez. Fuentes had landed a right just before that. Another good right by Fuentes in close. Chavez, as Larry pointed out before the fight, has an iron chin. Digging the left to the body with the left of the body, and Chavez begins to take command against the ropes. Both fighters landing vicious body punches in that round. Yeah. 
Meldrick Taylor is on the other end of our wire here. Meldrick, uh, your impressions of those first two rounds? Well, Chavez seemed to be too stationary. Um, he seemed to have started to pick up the pace now. He seemed to figure out this guy, Fuentes. In a matter of time, I think Chavez would start really taking over this fight. But right now, he seemed too stationary and too, and too, and too patient. Thank you, Meldrick. Here's a sequence in this round, a left followed by a right and a left to the body by Chavez. Folks, it's a major league combination from a major league fighter. Experts typically regard Chavez as one of the most accurate punchers in the sport. Our punch stat computations had him landing 60% of his blows in round two. Padilla warning Sammy Fuentes not to hold behind the head while punching. punch combination with the left. Still a busier fighter. He misses a lot of punches, but he's, he's showing some nice versatility here, Jim. He'll stand and punch, and he'll move outside and inside. Sammy Fuentes can fight a little bit, I'll say that. Third of those punches was a glancing blow, but that was a solid right hand to the jaw by Chavez. Went disappears unhurt, though. Another right that landed. First minute of the round belonged largely to Fuentes, but Chavez has begun again to counter effectively. Fuentes showing no fear and no respect for Chavez. Doing an excellent job. pretty when you move. See how you do it. You do it very good. You got to go after him. You got to make you make yourself look good. See, when you throw your combinations, you look good. All right. Harold Letterman, our unofficial official, give us your verdict for the first three rounds. Larry, I've got a two rounds to one favor. Julio says to Chavez, he was digging those hooks to the body early in a fight. The third round, Sammy Fuentes got busy, and I thought he just barely edged uh, Julio says to Chavez to pull out that third round. But I still think that Chavez has a complete control with those shots to deliver. Okay, check us out. I've given Fuentes two of the first three rounds. And as round four begins, we are joined by Ray Leonard, regularly our expert commentator here on HBO, taking the night off tonight as he trains for his upcoming assignment with Roberto Duran. But
Certainly no stranger to Julio Cesar Chavez's fights. What have you seen so far, Ray? Well, Chavez is trying to pick the tempo of the fight up. In fact, he's landed some great body shots. I thought that third round he was able to slow down for Fuentes and pretty much take control. I thought it was just a matter of time. Fuentes is aggressive and shows no fear whatsoever. You see what's happening for Fuentes. He's really uh, showing a lot of uh, styles to Chavez. He's turning southpaw. He's moving around. I don't think he has the power to get in type of respect from Chavez. Who has? <laughs> Fuente <laughs> does have the power, Larry. Right? I'm a little slow now because I thought today was my day off. <laughs> we'll get you in here. Good left hand by Chavez in close. A little bit of a thinking man's battle for both oh, fighters. You get the sense that Chavez is content to be patient and allow Fuentes to wear himself down a little bit. Watch the body shot thrown by Chavez. He goes to the head. Then he drills those body shots, takes their toes, slows the man down. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. As a matter of fact, uh, a few more weeks and I'll be ready to go. Well, that's a good idea. <laughs> a lot of the punches thrown by Fuentes are not really solid punches, although he's throwing points. He just wants to get in and get out. A lot of times he has a tendency to lay in too long. Do you think Chavez has sufficient punching power at 140 pounds to be the kind of champion here that he was in the two lower weight classes, Ray? I don't think his power fluctuates. I think the fact of the matter is he's fighting bigger opponents. And it's, it takes much more to put them down or to get them out. You've had the same experience, haven't you? Exactly. I found both guys are some terrible shots in there. And I found out that fighting bigger men, you know, it takes much more. Round four, very much like the first three. Fuentes giving no quarter. Crowd starting to chant Chavez, Chavez. A long stretch of time there during which only Fuentes threw punches. Chavez either resting or unable to get off against the very aggressive Sammy Fuentes. And Chavez goes back to his corner a little dissatisfied with himself. You gotta throw punches, you can't stand there. Box him, box him, don't stay close to him, make him miss. You've gotta start thinking. Work right, work hard. You've got the capacity to knock him out. Throw your combinations. You first, Julio, you first. And here we are at ringside. And Larry, I want you to note this landmark occasion. For the first time in my HBO boxing career, I think I've been able to outdress Ray Leonard. This shirt isn't even new. What's wrong with you? It's my son's shirt, by the way. Came straight from training, huh? <laughs> the cleanest was closed. Let me tell you. The, the, chic, the chic Ray Leonard. Thanks for joining us for the Thanks, round. fellas, always. All right. Ray Leonard scheduled to fight Roberto Duran on the evening of December 7 here in Las Vegas. And round five begins. Sammy Fuentes in the military fatigue style shorts, camouflage, and Julio Cesar Chavez wearing black shorts for the first time in his 65 fight professional career. Yesterday, Julio Cesar Chavez vowed to us that he would be more aggressive and go for an early knockout tonight, but so far, this has been a performance pretty typical of the ones we saw in the last couple of years against Roger Mayweather and Jose Luis Ramirez and Edwin Rosario. Measured, calculated, patient. And in the end, we have to see just how much staying power the challenger has. Because right now, He's giving Chavez all he, all he can handle, to tell you the truth. I mean, I scored 
three of the first four rounds for the challenger. And here's Let's another long stretch in which Chavez is content to stand against the ropes and block or slip punches, taking several while only Fuentes throws. You wonder if Chavez is flat, overtrained, in some way not himself. It should be noted he had some stretches like this against Mayweather in May, but ultimately was able to command the bout. ourselves whether Fuentes will have the stamina to go at this pace for 12 rounds. He is a triathlete, believe it or not. Solid right hand in close by Chavez and suddenly Fuentes' hands stop moving. I don't know if he should jump in the water or ride his bicycle or go for a long run right here if, as a triathlete. You know, you're setting me up, and I love it, because <laughs> yesterday you had the great line, but I'll steal it anyway. They don't hit you during a triathlon. That's right. Those triathlons would be a lot shorter if you were getting hit along the way. <laughs> <laughs> Round five comes to a close, and in the last 30 seconds, the first signs of life from Chavez in about a round and a half, but you suspect that the unbeaten Meldrick Taylor, unquestionably the man with the fastest hands and feet in this weight class, might be salivating just a little bit as he looks on in Philadelphia because Chavez tonight does not look like the kind of fighter who would be favored to beat a Meldrick Taylor. What do you think, Meldrick? Well, we have to see March 17th. Chavez seems to, be, to me to um, be a lot of, let's see, like a lot is on his mind right now. And it's like he's not really into the fight. But he really is impressive because it seems like everything he's throwing right now is a solid punch. I think a matter of time he will um, catch up to his guys for twice. What about is the that, Oh, go ahead, Larry. Is that an analysis or a hope uh, right now? Because I have Fuentes uh, considerably ahead in this fight at this point. And I imagine Meldrick Taylor is uh, getting a little bit more anxious with each round. Well, round six begins. And we'll see if we continue with the long stretches in which Chavez has been content to stand against the ropes, allowing Quintus to bomb away. No, we won't. Not for the moment. This is a slightly different Julio Cesar Chavez. Back on the attack with left hands. I think Chavez believes he hurt Fuentes with that right hand. Well, the way his leg moved involuntarily, I'm talking about Fuentes, he may have hurt him, and he's hand hitting him with some very heavy stuff. And here comes Fuentes right back at him. Is that his last shot? Or can he keep it up? Solid left hand by Fuentes, and now Chavez has stopped throwing punches. Another right hand by Chavez. Tremendous exchange. Blood around the nose of Sammy Fuentes. Chavez is punching accuracy, starting to take its toll. Meldrick Taylor made a good point. When he throws, he lands. Fuentes seems to be gathering himself for one more all-out flirt, spurt. Good right hand. And there's a spurt. No, it was just a flirt. Here comes Chavez again. There's Fuentes again. Bouncing back with the right hand. Just that awesome willpower of Chavez. I don't know how much more Fuentes can take of this, but there he comes back. Chavez blocked both of those uppercuts. And now 
both fighters are a little bit tired from the heated action of the first two minutes of this round. Let's take a look at some of that early action in that round. A straight left followed by a hook to the body, followed by a left hook, followed by two more lefts, and about three or four punches after that, all unanswered. Okay, set us up. And all landing solidly. This is what trainers are talking about when they urge their fighters to throw punches in combination. Keep coming. Chavez does it as well as anyone in the business. Sammy Fuente stood up between rounds in the corner, and you saw him bleeding from the mouth. But Fuente still throwing a lot and still landing. This is that portion of the fight where Chavez starts taking his opponents to a country they've never been to. They've never had to fight as hard for as long as they do when they fight Chavez. And that's when he usually prevails. Three solid blows in a row. And again, Fuentes slows down a little. Chavez digs to the body. since May, all non-title fights. Two of them early knockouts. He's got another one scheduled for December 16 if he comes out of this clean. Fuente's not answering with anything significant right now. Uh, the texture of the bout has changed. Fuente seems to be throwing arm punches now. That's right, boy. No zip left. You think about all those lefts to the body that Chavez digs with such discipline. by Fuentes. Very game performance by Sammy Fuentes of Puerto Rico, but Julio Cesar Chavez slowly, systematically beginning to take command. Okay, sit down, sit down. Says, tie him up, throw your jab. He's okay, he's okay. Get him water, get him water. 
Harold Letterman, how do you score the fight now? Larry, I've got it four rounds to three, 67 to 66 in favor of Julio Cesar Chavez. He gets tremendous leverage, tremendous balance, and therefore tremendous power in his shots. And he's winning it because Fuentes is laying out of ropes and laying in front of him. You gotta go out there. Go get him. Round eight of the scheduled 12 rounds begin. I should point out that Larry Merchant differs only slightly from Harold Letterman. I have it four to three for Fuentes. Could be academic. Fuentes, a kid from the swamps. Well, they just called that a fight. Okay, right. Right. Carlos Padilla right. looking at both fighters. Uh, looks like he's uh, treading water a little bit here. You'll recall that Chavez's title bout with Jose Luis Ramirez here in Las Vegas ended on a butt. Spreading swamp water, huh? Chavez now, as was the case in the first two rounds, content to back up some and let Fuentes come to him, giving him a chance to counter accurately. By our punch count statistics, Chavez has landed more than half of his punches in the fight. That takes its toll. But they're hard punches, too, like that and that. You know that pity pat jab stuff from Chavez. Fuentes dropping to the knees a moment ago was called a slip. Might be a little fatigued. Yeah, and you Bob mentioned he's an slip. effective triathlete. You don't expect mm -hmm. fatigue, but Chavez is something else. Relax, relax. You got more time. Keep boxing him just like you have been. You got to get in your rhythm. Get more rhythm. This is the ninth round coming up. Julio. Everything okay? Yeah. I'm focused. There was an accidental butt that didn't amount to a whole lot in the round, but there it is right there. It landed on the eye of Chavez. bothered him at all. Beginning of round nine, and typically in these late rounds, Fighters have trouble against the consistent, sustained attack, the accuracy of the punching of Julio Cesar Chavez. See if Fuentes is any different.
Diaz did tell us before the fight that if he didn't get him in the first half of the fight, he'd be content just to box him. But uh, I think he can edit that comment and change his mind anytime he feels like it. If the opportunity is there, and right. certainly he's looking for it. It is not yet target practice, but it is verging in that direction. Incidentally, the word from our producer, Ross Greenberg, is that former world champion Ruben Castillo, serving as interpreter for us, is astonished by the calm and collected character of Sammy Fuente's corner. He thinks they ought to perhaps be a little more excited. Solid right hand. Fuentes is beginning to take a lot of punishment. His mask has changed dramatically in the last three rounds. The clinical viciousness of Julio Cesar Chavez. Relentless Chavez goes on. His face unmarked. And Fuentes is really hurt now. Fuentes yeah. bleeding all over himself. He's got time is running out in this round. He probably will survive. I don't know how much longer he will, though. Well, you get a sense of why Roger Mayweather elected to sit down after 10 rounds and stay on his stool back in May. Let's see if we can find out where the cut was open. He bloodied his nose. That that punch from Chavez brought some blood. At this point in the fight, you get the impression that Fuentes has said, "Okay, you win. I'm going to try to survive." By punch stat computations, Chavez landed 57% of his punches in that round. Coming up after the fight, the Tyson story, and we expect to be talking live with Mike, who is here at ringside tonight. Beginning of round 10. Rounds 8 and 9, brilliant exhibitions by Chavez. More of the same now as this round begins. It doesn't look like he's going for a decision right here, Jim. He wants to end it. it would appear to be largely a matter of how much of this Fuentes wants to take and how much Carlos Padilla is going to let him absorb. Any scorecard that had Fuentes ahead early has in all probability been turned around by now. You got that right. <laughs> Including <laughs> yours, I presume. Obviously. Chavez is like some exotic piece of farm equipment that just keeps rolling just keeps rolling and the arms keep going and Fuente steps away and looks away almost as though he's ready and Chavez stepped away and looked at Padilla and said why don't you stop it this isn't doing this guy any good 
He's put up a brave fight. Yeah. It's time to go. He deserves an honorable stoppage. Crowd knows it. Chavez knows it. But here he comes back. He what a gutty performance. He doesn't want any of our sympathy, <laughs> Jim. Yeah. He's a fighter. And he's doing this for $30,000. He made 75 for fighting Rodolfo Aguilar a few months ago. Okay, bring it up, bring it up. Step up, step up. Well, he'll join a long list of good fighters who made the effort and didn't have enough against the man who is still regarded by many as pound for pound the best in the sport. Yeah. Chavez, good left hand. Chavez, again, is getting about a half a million dollars, and he's having to earn it tonight. Don King, his promoter, has always had more success with heavyweights than with the smaller men, but he has done a very good job of exposing and promoting and making money for this great fighter. Well, Fuentes, who once lost a knockout to Roger Mayweather, has now made it just as far with Chavez as Mayweather did. Stand and sit down, sit down. We're going to finish the fight. You look at it with the other eye. Move your hands well. Standing. Are you okay? Está bien. Can you see? Do you want to continue? Huh? No. Huh? He's enough. That's enough. Bastante. Enough. Just as with Roger Mayweather at the end of the tenth round, Sammy Fuentes gave everything he had but he could not tell a lie at the end. When he was asked, have you had enough, can you go on, he had to tell the truth. And the truth is, is that Chavez is just too much. Even if his mouth told the, a lie, his face mm -hmm. told the truth. This was in many ways an identical fight to the Mayweather fight. Yes. Uh, look at him, he's unmarked. I mean, he's something of a miracle, this kid. I mean, the way he comes comes through everything and he looks at you and he smiles and his face is clear and he says well I guess I'll fight next month again one word says it best <laughs> he's a fighter Julio Cesar Chavez 65 and 0 now in his career since World War one the longest streak without a loss at the beginning of a boxing career belongs to the great Mexican champion Julio Cesar Chavez final punch stat statistics in the bout Chavez landing according to our computation 52% of the shots he attempted. That's just remarkable. Fuentes, the more aggressive fighter, 806 punches thrown in the bout. You can't say enough about his guttiness, his commitment, his effort against a guy who is simply a monument to everything that the sport is about. It's going to be a long night and a long day tomorrow for Sammy Fuentes. He can take a lot of pride away from this. And he'll have to be satisfied with a lot of pride because in this sport, for this kind of punishment, $30,000 is not a lot of money. Harold Letterman, your final card in the bout. How did you see it? Well, Jim, I had it seven rounds to three. Uh uh, 97 to 93 favor Julio Cesar Chavez. I mean, in the sixth round, the fight was over in essence. And when Sammy Fuentes couldn't see the punches coming anymore in the tenth round, when his right eye was completely closed, you knew it was right over right there. All right, the final details now from ring announcer Chuck Hall. Ladies and gentlemen, his opponent unable to answer the bell for the eleventh round. The winner by a TKO in the 10th round, still undefeated, and still the WBC Super Lightweight Champion of the World, Julio Cesar Chavez. And now we go up to Larry Merchant in the okay. ring, the chance to Julio, the champion. That was not an easy fight, was it? Esta pelea no era muy fácil, ¿verdad? No, es una pelea dura. Yo sabía que que era una pelea dura. I said it was not an easy fight. It was a tough fight, and I anticipated the tough fight. I had him ahead four rounds to one at the start of the fight. Were you concerned at all? 
él lo tenía de delante, cuatro rounds a tres. Si estabas preocupado tú. No, yo creo que él está ciego, está malo en la vista. <laughs> he, says, he says you're blind, you're being out of bad eyesight. <laughs> Thank you. The first thing you said when you got here was, I'm old. I'm getting old. What do you mean by that? Lo primero que dijiste cuando llegaste es que estás viejo. ¿Por qué? Eh, no sé. La verdad que, que todas estas peleas que estoy haciendo me sirven para la pelea con Manny Taylor. Con Manny Taylor va a ser totalmente diferente todo. Well, see, he's been fighting quite often, and uh, the fight with Meldrick Taylor is going to be a whole different fight. Before I get to Taylor, you have been fighting often. You're scheduled to fight again next month. Do you still want to go ahead with that fight after a tough fight like this? Después de una pelea dura como esta, Julio, piensas en pelear el mes que entra? Yes, very good. Yes, very good. Dan, ya me dio permiso. Voy a voy a voy a volver a defender mi campeonato el 16 de diciembre. Posteriormente descansaré. 25 días y empecé a entrenar para Medi Taylor. He says that Don has given him the okay to go ahead and fight. He's going to defend his title on December 16th. So after that, he's going, to, he's going to take a little rest and then go after Meldrick Taylor. By a little rest, it probably means he'll have a few four or six rounders right after that. But, but tell me your thoughts about Meldrick Taylor, who is regarded very highly in America. He's an Olympic gold medalist. He is undefeated. A lot of people think that he can beat you. Dice que todos consideran él un, un campeón porque es campeón de medalla de oro en los Olympics. ¿Y qué piensas tú de él? Que es un gran peleador, un, un peleador muy rápido, muy inteligente. Pero el 17 de marzo voy a ganarle a Mary Taylor. He said he's a very, very good fighter and he's a very quick fighter. But on the 17th of March, he's going to yeah, beat Mary Taylor. Sé que será una pelea bastante dura. It's a tough fight for him. Pero será un tren con Mary Taylor, un tren que lo va a arrollar. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough fight and it's, gonna tra it's like a train that's going to roll. Thank you very much, Julio. Thank you very much. I love you all. <laughs> Back to you, Jim. And after Jim talks to Meldrick Taylor, we'll talk to Mike Tyson. All right, thank you very much, Larry. And we mentioned all night that the most interested spectator in America is the man who, unlike the man who made $30,000 to fight Chavez tonight, will get something on the order of a million and a half dollars to fight him March 17. Meldrick Taylor, what did you think of the last five or six rounds of Chavez's performance here? I was very impressed with what I saw in there. Chavez was a very, everything through was very solid. He was, looked very evacitating his punches, and everything was accurate, and everything was consistent. Um, I was very impressed with the last couple of rounds. He started to pick the pace up and get very strong at each round, as each round progressed. And I was very um, impressed with what I saw. There's no secret to what Chavez does. There's no doubt that he'll try to do the same thing against you. What can you do against him to take advantage of your particular edges in speed and quickness? Well, Jim Lampley, I won't want to give away my uh, my my strategy, my game plan. Uh, I would just really look to um, offset him. I wouldn't have to be in 100% condition in order to be a guy like Chavez. I have the potentials and the skills to be Chavez with my own um, hand speed and foot speed. And um, but believe me, come March 17th, the strategy I will have to be Chavez. I will be victorious come March 17th. Without suggesting that you'll run, it seems obvious that you want to use the whole ring against a fighter like that. Um, well, I won't look to really um, utilize the whole ring. I look to really basically um, stand right there and then use my upper body movement to um, get away from punches. And with, like I said, with my hand speed, I'm looking to be able to punch every time. The best little bout that money can buy. Julio Cesar Chavez against Melvin.